woman's history in a, in a perspective of, of, of our province, uh, a political perspective a bit, and also uh, I, I want to share also with you some of the uh, some of the the road that I've taken in the past year. So on October 12, it's going to be a year since I've uh, become the first woman Attorney General and Minister of Justice in the province of New Brunswick. So I'm happy that I can bring a direct contribution to government decision and be heard as a voice and a voice for women, which I feel and some people do not like to hear this, <laughs> but I feel is a different voice, with a different experience, bringing a different point of view. We all live different experience, which when we're sitting at a table, uh, making decisions, or talking about different aspects, uh, directs us in a certain, uh, certain direction. So I'm, all, I'm one of the eight women that was elected last September and uh, if you think of only eight women on 55, I think we can think that there's still a lot of work to do. Uh, we hear from the media during various election period, how, oh, it's wonderful, we're progressing, there's more and more women, but I'd like to think that there's still a lot of work to do. And another fact, which I think is very important, is, and if we talk about history tonight, is that from 1867, to 2010, there only has been 33 women elected in New Brunswick. So you can see we would be all of the, if we look in the room, we would be about all of the women elected through the 400 years of uh, forming government in New Brunswick. So uh, that is, that is a, it's, it's a shocking number when you think about it. And we had to wait in uh, 1967 to elect the first women uh, Brenda Robertson, who lives here uh, in Moncton. And it's funny because when I, I have conversation once in a while with Senator Robertson, and uh, one of the times we were having this conversation, she was explaining to me how uh, when she first got to the legislature, there was no women's washroom. So how she had to use the washroom and make sure that she could go on by, without uh, being interrupted. And uh, being in, we were in the Centennial <laughs> Building, and even at the legislature, to give you an example, the guys, when, when we have a, the government side as a room on the side, and we have an antechamber, when we're done in the legislature, we go to the antechamber. And when you look at the guys' washroom, it's only two feet away, let's say, from the antechamber. The women's room, you have to walk through media out in the corridor. It's a nice washroom, don't get me wrong. But you can see it wasn't taught out. So it's, it's still a challenge. So we, um, we have work to do there. I'm happy to say that uh, when we formed government last year, uh, we have five women in cabinet, some at very important position, health, social development, which are uh, environment also, which are uh, huge uh, issues, and women were given the responsibility for these, uh, these issues. So I am, uh, being Attorney General and Justice Minister, uh, I am certainly humbled by the fact that I am the first one. For me, it's, it's even bizarre to think I am the first one being uh, year 2010, and that it took all this time to elect somebody. We know that there's a lot of women lawyers, so there's no reason why this position couldn't have been fulfilled before. And as for justice minister, in our province, you don't need to be a lawyer to be a justice minister, so no reason to why that position could have not been fulfilled. But I hope we've, uh, we've made history, and I hope that this will continue. You know, like me and government, uh, we see more and more about position like finance minister, transport minister. Uh, these are positions where they're mostly occupied by men, and I think it's important that uh, we <laughs> occupy those positions also. I can assure you that uh, I, I I know that we do things differently and we see things differently. I think we do a great job and we have to be uh, sure that uh, 
what we do as women has meaning that we I think we bring passion I know a lot of people are like oh my god you're you're, you're passionate I said well yeah <laughs> I am passionate you need to bring passion to these issues and it's important that people see that passion too and uh, we're there to ask for equality that's what we want we don't want more we don't want less we want equality uh, we don't want to occupy the back rooms of political meetings anymore. We want to be in front. We want to have a say. And uh, I got into politics because I said, well, if I want to make changes of the things I see, this is the place to make it. And your place could be anywhere else. But for me, this was my place. So nobody led me by the hand or opened the door. I didn't go with a friend. I just went by myself, but I found many friends and uh, I have many people around me. Um, being in politics is not just a, it, it's a, it's a sport where you need a team of people around you. You can't do it alone. So, uh, and you build on that. It's, a, it's another way, another dimension, bringing a different perspective. And you all know, you're all here. We have the same issue in corporations and the boardrooms now. I think our country is one of the worst one in regards to how many women are at the boardrooms, are leaders of big corporations. I think it's important that we ask the question. I know that myself and other women cabinet minister, we do ask the question, why isn't there more women in there? Have we done, what have we done to look at the fact that there is no women to occupy that position. So we challenge the civil servant, we challenge our colleagues to make sure that we bring that perspective. There's also something that we sometimes forget, it's the gender analysis. When we make decision, we have to ask ourselves, how do, does this decision affect women? And sometimes we don't do that. And I think it's important as women that when we make decisions, we t ask ourselves, how does this decision affect women? And we intend on continuing on doing that. But it's, it's uh, I was hearing uh, Julie talking about, uh, about the mentorship and uh, about the, uh, the men and having their overconfidence and sometimes us lacking confidence and, I was having a discussion when, uh, with one of the past colleagues that occupied my position, and we were talking about, uh, and I'm gonna be very frank, we're talking about judges' nomination. And uh, women, uh, there's a lot of women lawyers today, more and more, but uh, in the older generation, you can still, you don't find a lot of women in the older generation. Some have, have left the practice to take care of their family, even though they went to law school. Not a lot of them, so I kind of said, well, when you were talking to, when you were going to appoint somebody, how did it go? He says, well, there's one thing I can tell you. He said, when I call a man, he always said yes. When I call a woman, she was always unsure and had to check with her family. So that kind of stuck in my head of how how we think, how we do things differently. But I think we really have to be bold and to be there and to make sure that they know that we are there and we are present and show leadership. We need to show even more leadership sometimes. And I can tell you sometimes we need to work even harder. But that, that is the way it is. But uh, I think at the same time, um, and I always said, well, sometimes it's my mom's fault that I suffer uh, from a little bit of, um, of self-esteem issues because she told me I could have it all. <laughs> <laughs> could have a perfect family, perfect husband, perfect house, perfect job. But I said, it's not quite true. Nothing is really perfect. <laughs> and I think one of the issues we have is trying to obtain perfection. But I think that it's too much to ask of ourselves trying to be perfect. It's good to try to be perfect, but if we're not, I think we don't need to give ourselves a hard time about it. Let's just do it. Let's just go out and do it. So I know tonight that when I get home, there's gonna be some dishes in the sink and that uh, 
maybe the vacuum needs to be done and uh, maybe I haven't uh, folded the clothes very well during the weekend because even if I am the first woman attorney general, I still do laundry and clean washroom. <laughs> There's a message I can give you is that uh, we don't need to be perfect to succeed, but I know that most of you who are here today know how important it is to be part of organization and to push forward uh, being peers for each other. I think that is very important too, how, how we can be peers, how we can mentor each other, how we can make others profit from our own personal experience. doesn't have always to be positive, but uh, we are truthful. I found most women are very truthful about how things are. They won't sugarcoat it so that uh, you know what's to be expected. So my experience in the past year has been uh, really interesting. I can tell you that uh, yesterday I had my first round table on justice. So the day was divided in three. The first part was I had uh, we had a meeting with the various stakeholders on child internet exploitation a subject that's very dear to my heart because our kids may think they're safe on Facebook, but believe me, uh, we need to be there and, and to watch them. Uh, I was informed by a police officer who's uh, doing um, those kinds of investigation that uh, last year in Moncton, there was 1,500 reported cases of uh, people either luring kids or having dealt with uh, child pornography through the internet. So that was my morning. In the afternoon, we had uh, a round table on family law. I know that a lot of challenges in regards to family law, the price that it costs now to uh, be in front of the courts, the challenges with the, uh, the time that it takes, how adversarial it is, and how at the end of the day, nobody really gets any satisfaction other than being really hurt and having fought uh, certain things, so we're trying to simplify that, uh, that process. And I had a town hall meeting, an open house town hall meeting on justice last night, and the first uh, person who came and talked, and it was in the Times and Transcript today, and it was a public meeting, talked about uh, his son that was murdered and how he felt he was treated by the justice system. So it's, it's an open eye on uh, on what we do, uh, we try, I try to be out there to speak with people, for frontline people about the system, about what, what we can change, how their experience was, so that we can learn. And uh, Fredericton certainly doesn't have all the answer. We need to go out there and see what people are, are living through and going through. So it was, um, it was a, a day that, was, that will certainly I, I think I will remember it all my life, you know, and when you have a father who lost a son, so it was it was ch touching. So, and then I get back in this morning. We have Super Wednesdays. Uh, we have all our meetings on Wednesdays during the <laughs> summer. So that was today, and uh, one of my other job is pensions. So this morning I had uh, to deal with issues in regards to pensions. So it's. Uh, I have a lots of, uh, of challenges, and they're very different from one one the other, but uh, certainly they're, they're dear to my heart. And I think we can make a difference. I, I really do. I think we see things differently, and it's important sometimes to get off of our comfort zone and risk things, and I know I've, I've done that. And when I first ran in 2006, I wasn't successful. Um, I had somebody make a comment to me that said, uh, you know, when somebody tries everything, usually they, they're good at nothing. So <laughs> I see that person today and I kind of tell them, well, look, I think I, I persevere. And you remember when you told me that? So um, just to put it in perspective. And uh, I wrote for the Times and Transcript for about a year and a half. I wasn't paid. I did it to give my opinion and uh, because I, 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 I always say to my kids, there's one thing that if I see this on your report card that you talk too much in class, don't worry, mom had the same issue. So. <laughs> <laughs> there's always hope for you. So thank you for inviting me.